Yo, what is up guys? Delboy here, aka Blue Collar Sports TV. Hopefully you guys are doing well. If you're new here, smash that like, hit subscribe, all of that good stuff. So Javonta Davis' next fight has now been announced. He will be fighting on the 5th of December, and he will be fighting fellow PBC stablemate, Roly Romero. I'm presuming this fight's going to take place at lightweight. I know Tank Davis last fought at 140, but primarily, let's be honest, the guys are lightweight, and Roly Romero has also been fighting at 135, so I am assuming this fight will happen at lightweight, but who knows, I, I guess we'll find out more details as we get a bit closer, but all in all, man, let's be honest, is this really the fight that we want to see from Tank Davis? In my opinion, absolutely not. Now, for me personally, Tank Davis is one of the most frustrating fighters in the sport of boxing. When he was on the come up before he won a world title, I was actually quite excited by Tank Davis. I felt that he had a lot of raw potential. He was explosive. He was quick. He was powerful. He was good to watch. And I had quite big expectations from Tank Davis. And it was going okay. He fought Jose Pedraza, a champion at the time, and he won that fight by knockout. But ever since then, really, for me, Tank Davis's career has been unsatisfactory, I guess I would say. He's not really taken the fights that I've wanted him to take. When he was a champion at 130, he never unified. He never fought any, any of the fellow champions. I know he fought Leo Santa Cruz, but Leo Santa Cruz has never been a 130 pounder. And even, even before that Tank Davis fight at 126, Leo Santa Cruz wasn't looking good at all. Uh, he obviously fought at lightweight as well, fought Yuriokis Gamboa, never fought any, any of the top lightweights, and most recently he's fought at 140 against Mario Barrios, who I would say is like a, a fringe contender at 140. So all in all, I think the level of competition that Tank Davis has fought has been pretty low, if I'm being honest, and this fight with Roley Romero isn't going to change that. Now, Roly Romero, he's a relatively big lightweight, he's strong, he's tough, he hits relatively hard, but the guy has no real skill set whatsoever. He really just gets by on strength, power, and being relentless. We saw against Jackson Marinez, Roly Romero got schooled in that fight and got a gift decision, and we then saw Jackson Marinez fight Richard Comey at 135, and Richard Comey destroyed Jackson Marinez. So really, what level is Roly Romero? I mean, it seems obvious that he's a few levels below Richard Comey, who's not a champion at lightweight right now. He recently got destroyed by Teofimo Lopez. So Roly Romero, man, he really has no discernible skills in terms of boxing. He's extremely low level. If he was from the UK, I would say he's a domestic level contender. He's just strong. He's relatively big, he hits hard, but that's really all I can give him, to be honest. And stylistically against Tank Davis, I can't see Roly Romero posing any real problems. The guy has no defense whatsoever, he's open, he swings himself off balance, poor distance control, lack of a jab, no head movement, no creativity with his offense, he just marches forwards and loads up on hooks and power shots. Tank Davis in my opinion, is going to walk this guy onto all sorts of shots and more than likely knock him out quite quickly. Maybe Roly, maybe Roly Romero has a great chin that I'm not aware of, maybe, but even, even if he does, he's so defensively open, he's so defensively flawed and unskilled that he could have a great chin, but more than likely he'll still get knocked out or stopped in this fight. I mean, Roly Romero... He's a fun follow on social media, he's a funny dude, you know, kind of entertaining to listen to, but as like a fighter in the lightweight division or 140, he's not top 10 in either division and not close. And from what I see, from, from what I hear, this will actually be on pay-per-view in the USA. I mean, Roly Romero surely has to go down as one of the worst pay-per-view headliners in American pay-per-view history. I mean, I'm not trying to be nasty, but the kid sucks. He's just a big, strong kid with a bit of a punch, and really that's it. He's like a street fighter with gloves on. Maybe 
his size and strength could pose Tank an issue. I doubt it. Maybe his maybe his awkward style could give Tank an issue. I doubt it. I mean, this really isn't a great fight for Tank Davis. It's not a legacy fight. It's not a fight that's going to build his resume or put him in the right direction. It's just a cherry-picked in-house fight with very little risk. So the career of Tank Davis, in my opinion, is still mediocre. He's not delivered on the promise which he once showed. And, you know, to me, that's a bit of a shame. I want to see Tank Davis in there with world-class fighters from 130 to 135. I want to see him fight fellow champions. I want to see Tank fight Ryan Garcia, Lomachenko, Devin Haney, Teofimo Lopez. You know, I want to see him fight these sort of fights, but we're no closer to them. And they're not going to happen anytime soon. I mean, Floyd Mayweather himself said, Tank's going to fight in-house fights. He's going to fight guys who are aligned with the PBC. And really, that doesn't leave us with many great options. The best option Tank Davis has, in my opinion, would be Subriel Matias, but that's not going to happen. So, this is a disappointing fight uh, for Tank Davis. Just a cherry pick, you know. Uh, they're going to try and sell this fight with degeneracy. Roly Romero likes to talk. I'm sure Tank Davis is going to be talking shit in this fight as well. You might get a few fisticuffs at the press conferences. That's how they're going to, going to sell this fight. You know, that world star type of promotion. It is what it is, but it's not a good fight. It really isn't a good fight. Anyway, share your thoughts below. It's been you guy, Delboy. Peace.